Hi, this is Pastor John from Millerville Community Church, and this is Evening Vespers. Tonight's meditation is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. We're going to be looking at verses 11 through 32, the story of the prodigal son. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. A younger one said to his father, Father, give me a share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not on after long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off to a distant country, and there he squandered his wealth in wild living. And he spent everything. There was a severe famine in the, that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything to eat. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am not worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, and he was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son. He threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field and when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, What's going on? Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has him back, safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. One of the most moving stories that Jesus ever tells that truly explains what salvation is all about, what it is to be lost and to be found, foundation of songs like Amazing Grace that are known all over the world. And as the more we hear it, the more mysterious it is that only God could be like this, redeeming and loving and forgiving. But the point is to urge us to be the same as we deal with other people in our lives, that we are looking for repentance. People are eager to get to forgiveness nowadays, not to pass judgment. And we're always looking to save people from the consequences of their decisions. But don't forget what this story is also about, about letting people go, letting them learn the hard lesson, and then letting them come back as they want to recover from their hard decisions that had led them into disasters. There is a way back, a way of repenting, of turning around, coming back home, for Father God is waiting for us. Right now there are a lot of hard hearts in our world, people who don't feel like they need God or need to repent. But that's going to change, as it always must. 
as the world gets hard in their hearts, so does it get hard in our experience. And then we come to that breaking point when we realize we've been fools and that we do need God. Well, we need to keep watch and be ready to celebrate, to receive them home, to help them come to forgiveness as they seek to repent for their sins. Sins have a way of making their own argument for repentance. Pray for the prodigal to come home in your own heart, in your family, in your family and friends, and in your country. Let us pray. Lord, we are praying for prodigals. Lord, if we have wandered away from you and have gone our own way, like sheep lost, we pray, Lord, that we would realize we're better back with the good shepherd, back with the Father who is watching for us, and make our way home, and to come back humbled, admitting, confessing, holding nothing back, sharing all the truth of how we have rebelled against God and his true will. We, Lord, we come back with that repentant heart, and we pray that our families and our nations and all the people around us would also do that. If you can shorten the road of the prodigal, Lord, we pray that you would do that, that they might come home quickly, that conviction would come on their hearts soon, that they might be drawn and that they might find the doors of true believers who can help them find redemption and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. I don't know if you've got a prodigal in your life that you're praying for and are urging not to give up. Those prayers make a difference. Keep watch, for God is too. I hope you've enjoyed Vespers tonight, and if you've had I want to encourage you to share this with someone else by hitting the share button below, the like button, sending the link in an email, leaving a comment, letting other people know about our ever-growing family of faith every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Until we get together next time, this has been Pastor John from Millerville Community Church, encouraging you, as always, to keep the faith and to share it too. We have a simple way for you to reach MCC with a simple text. Text us to this number with an inquiry or prayer. You can also text any keyword to subscribe for updates. Come escape the city. Come to God's country. Come to God's people. Come to God's Word. Welcome to Millerville Community Church. We're just a short drive away.